What's up? My name is TechNumber here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. This video is going to be a quick crash course on optimizing some important things on your computer. This video is tackling Windows 10. The next one will be tackling Windows 11. In the description down below, you'll find links to both Windows 10, 11 and NVIDIA optimization guides that'll get you even more out of your computer. This video is just going to be an add-on that I'll reference in future optimization guides to get you up to speed. So when I talk about adding a program, just know that I'm talking about whatever game I'm referencing in any future optimization videos or just games in general. You'll see that in just a bit. These are some pretty good steps that you should follow and make sure you're following properly each time you want to optimize any game. So to keep from repeating myself, here's the video. First of all, you'll need to update your Windows and of course your graphics drivers as well. They're super simple, I'm not going to cover that here. Just hit start, type an update and check for updates. If you find any, download and install them. On top of that, if you haven't already, you should update your graphics card drivers. NVIDIA, AMD or Intel, you'll need to download the drivers from whatever the official website is. You'll find them linked in the description down below. Or of course, if you have a program like NVIDIA GeForce Experience, you can update your graphics drivers through there. As soon as you get your hands on a new game, it's a good idea to update all of your drivers and Windows. If you're currently running Windows 10, do you need to upgrade to Windows 11? Well, the answer is probably not and most likely not, but if you'd like to try it, sure, why not? You shouldn't be upgrading for performance reasons, rather that you like the new features that you can get in Windows 11 and not in Windows 10. Currently, there's no reason for me to swap, so I haven't done so. Next up, it's a good idea to know whether you're CPU limited or GPU limited. Programs in the background often use your graphics card to speed up animations and things like that. If you find that your game is taking up tons of your graphics card or tons of both your CPU and your graphics card, you can usually get extra frames and performance, lower input latency, etc. by turning off GPU utilization in other background programs that run while you're playing the game. How do you find out if your GPU or CPU limited? Well, simply fire up a game and if a benchmark is available, start that. Otherwise, you can hop into a world or an area that usually tanks your FPS quite a bit and pull up your Windows Task Manager. Inside of there, you're going to be looking on the Performance tab to see whether your CPU is pinned to 100% or your GPU is pinned to 100%. Whichever one is maxed out all the time is what you're limited by. If you find that neither are limited, don't worry, it could be the game engine or something else slowing it down. It's just very handy to know what's holding you back. Once you do know what's holding you back, if you find that you're not CPU limited and the game's only taking up 10, 20, 30%, you can disable hardware acceleration in your browser, Discord, Steam, etc. to tell them to stop using resources on your graphics card and instead use your CPU that's sitting idle. In a moment, I'll show you how to do this for Discord. However, you may not want to do this for your browser if you find that turning off hardware where acceleration does cause a negative effect in whatever program you're using, you can always turn them back on and either keep them closed or keep, say, video playback on Twitch, YouTube, etc. paused or keep those tabs closed while the programs are minimized running in the background. What you should do in programs like Discord is head into user settings, head down to advanced and you'll likely find a hardware acceleration option. If you turn this off, it'll disable all the hardware acceleration, taking load away from your GPU, even at idle. Next up, if you haven't already, it's a very good idea to clean out your PC as well as all of the temporary folders. Usually this only really gives you a huge impact in performance if you have really small drives or of course they're near capacity. If you hit start and type in cleanup, you'll find a very useful tool called disk cleanup run this as administrator. When it pops up, simply choose C drive, the same one with Windows on it, and click OK. Wait for it to scan for leftover files on your computer, and when it's done, you should see a list like this. Usually I tick all of these temporary and leftover files, but I'll leave recycle bin unticked to go through that later, and thumbnails down here as I work with tons of images, but I don't want to wait around for all of the thumbnails to regenerate. However, of course, if you're sure there's nothing left in your recycle bin, you can tick it like I have and click OK. Then delete files. When you've done so, everything we had ticked on that list, all the temporary files and leftover files, will then be cleaned off of our PC. Even though it does have temporary files listed, it doesn't clean all of the temporary folders. Once this is complete, it's a good idea to hold down Start and R, and inside of here, type in percentage, temp percentage, and hit enter. Then a new file browser should open into app data local temp. If you don't see anything, head across to view at the very top and make sure hidden items is ticked as well as file name extensions. This will be useful for later. Click anywhere in the folder, hit control A to select everything and then shift delete to permanently delete them and skip the recycle bin. 
click yes, and after doing some, tons of temporary files should be cleaned off your computer. If you see a pop-up saying that you need to give it admin, simply click repeat for all and click continue. Now, of course, if you have programs running in the background, usually they work with temporary files to some extent. If you find errors saying that you're unable to delete some files, click do this for all and then skip. This way, it'll ignore all of the files currently in use or otherwise inaccessible for deletion. As you can see, running my computer for a couple of days, I've already got 10 gigabytes of temporary files that I can clean out. In just a moment, you should see those inaccessible files. There we go, there's the first one. Do this for all and skip. Simply do that for the rest of these pop-ups that you see throughout the deletion process and wait for it to finish. When it's eventually done, we'll be heading across to this PC, then C drive, Windows, and all the way down to temp. Open this folder up and once again, Control A, Shift Delete and Enter. Rinse and repeat exactly the same steps that we had, skipping all of the issues that we have. This folder is usually less full, but of course may stack up with tons of files over time. When you're done clearing out your temporary files and your C drive using disk cleanup, it's a good idea to open it up once again as admin and rinse and repeat all of the steps that we just did, selecting D drive or whatever it is instead of C drive where your Windows is. The last few general tips before we get into game specific ones are to free up as many resources as possible. For me at least, whenever I have the Discord overlay enabled, it usually causes me to lose some performance or gain input latency in anything from, say, circle clicking in OSU to competitive play in Call of Duty Warzone. It's a good idea to try and disable all overlays that you can, including performance monitoring ones, while you're playing games and you want a smooth experience, unless of course you absolutely need them for certain things that you do, such as you only have one monitor and you want to see who joins your channel in Discord. It of course is very situational, but if you find yourself never using it, it's a good idea to turn off overlays. On top of that, if your start bar looks anything like mine, it's a good idea to go ahead and close some things before you actually play any games. This way, it'll clear up lots of system resources, including RAM. The best way to do so is hold Control Shift and press Escape to bring up the Windows Task Manager. Inside of here, you'll want to sort by CPU, then memory and GPU to see what is taking up what on your computer and close as many background programs that you're not currently using as possible. Everything from email clients to left open documents. When you're done closing as many programs as possible, you may notice that you're doing some of these repeatedly. Why is that? Well, more than likely they start with your computer. Head across to the startup tab at the very top and simply sort by status. Everything listed as enabled here starts up when your computer logs in. Simply right-click programs you don't need to start up with your computer that you can then start up manually later and choose disable. This way they won't start with your computer and instead you'll have to start them manually so your boot up time should improve and of course you'll keep more resources available for your games. If you're a power user, head across to the services tab at the very top and click open services. Inside of here, we're doing exactly the same thing. Sort by startup type and everything listed as automatic starts up when your computer logs in. Double click anything here and set it from startup type automatic to manual in order for it to not automatically start with your computer and instead start when you manually start it yourself or a program that you open up requires it to be running. Don't set it to disabled, otherwise it may cause some issues. From here, we can dive into some general tips for optimizing games. With this, you'll need to know where the game is and of course what the main EXE is. If it's a game with a launch room, it's definitely not that one that we're looking for. Usually you can find your way to game files using the game platform it's on. For example, Steam. In order to get to CSGO, I'd right click the game, hover over manage and click browse local files. Then somewhere in this folder structure, you should find the game's main EXE. You're not looking for a launch room, you're looking for the actual thing that runs while you're playing the game. If you don't know what it is, simply open up the game and open up task manager when it's running. Inside of here, look for the game, right click it and click open file location. If it's grayed out, expand it and right click the actual game itself rather than a crash handler or anything else like that, right click open file location. This should open up a browser and take you directly to the exe that we'll be using in the next step here. What you'll want to do is right click the game's exe and click properties. Inside of here, head across to the compatibility tab and click change high DPI settings. Inside of here, make sure that this tick box is checked and application is selected. Then click OK. Something that usually helps for games, but maybe not so much nowadays, is the disable full screen optimizations tick box over here. You'll want to come back to this at the very end when you're comfortable with your in-game graphic settings and see whether you get better performance with this ticked or unticked. 
basically, when you run games in full screen, they run in some sort of faux full screen. They really run in windowed borderless mode, allowing you to tab in and out faster without adjusting your display. This of course may have negative effects for some games, where you gain tons of performance running them in exclusive full screen mode rather than windowed or windowed borderless. Ticking this option, make sure that full screen will always be exclusive full screen in most games. Though once again, some games don't work well in full screen, they work better in windowed. When you're happy with settings, click OK. And at the very top, where the folder path is, right click and click copy address as text. Then hit start, type in GPU and open graphics settings. Inside of here, make sure hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is turned on and under graphics performance preference, select desktop app. If it's a folder on your computer, such as here, then click browse, click at the very top where the path is, paste using control V and enter to navigate across to it. Then double click the actual game and it should be selected on the list. When you expand it, click options and inside of here, choose high performance, then save. When you've done some, your computer will make sure to run this on the best graphics card you have available. If you install the game through the Xbox app, for example, you'll need to select a Microsoft Store app here and select it from this large list. Super simple. Then repeat the same steps. When we're done here, click the home button and head into the gaming section. On the Xbox Game Bar tab, make sure that this is turned off unless you specifically use some of the Xbox Game Bar features. On the Game Mode tab, this should be turned on. Finally, if you have the Xbox Game Bar installed or you've used it in the past, you may have automatic capture running in the background. Similar to Nvidia Shadow Play, it records your screen all the time and allows you to clip the past few seconds or minutes. Hit Start, type in Xbox and open the Xbox Game Bar if you have it. Otherwise, don't worry, this feature isn't enabled for you. At the very top, click the settings button and head across to the capturing section. In here, make sure record in the background while I'm playing a game is unticked, then click anywhere in a blank space. Now, congratulations, you successfully quickly cleaned out your PC and made sure whatever game you're gonna be playing has the best chance of giving you good frames. Of course, it's still very important and probably most important to optimize the actual in-game settings. That of course will be covered in their respective videos. This video was just created to save a bunch of time so I don't have to repeat myself going through these exact same steps. Though in all future guides, I definitely will make sure to tell you what EXE you're looking for, especially for the GPU selection and things like that. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Once again, in the description down below, you'll find the Windows 10 and Windows 11 optimization guides to get tons out of your computer. I've got exciting 2022 versions of those coming out soon. And of course, NVIDIA optimization guides as well to get the most out of your graphics card. On top of that, if you'd like to get further into taking control of your PC's startup, you'll find a complete crash course on optimizing your computer's startup process, including stopping certain programs that don't show up on those lists, automatically starting with your computer. Thank you all for watching this video. My name's been Techno, but here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!